Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. My name is Angus and in today's tutorial video, I'm going to show you a technique I've been working on to create pins and cavities inside your STL models extremely easily within Mesh Mixer or another mesh editing program. Now, I'm not going to pretend that I know exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about normals, but essentially a triangle in an STL file has a direction that it faces. And this is important for your slicing software to determine, you know, what volume should it fill up when it creates your 3D print? So yes, I flunked maths in high school. I certainly don't know a lot about the calculations behind working out normals, but I will show you this technique I've been working on in Mesh Mixer to manipulate normals to create files with cavities extremely easily and with very low computational power. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Mesh Mixer, and what I'm gonna show you in this video today is how to do this kind of thing. So these are pins within a very large model I'm currently creating, and it's a very high polygon model, so it wasn't an option to take this into Fusion 360 or Tinkercad, because there was too many triangles in this model, and I would have had to decimate it, which means I would have lost quality. So I developed this technique to create pins within Mesh Mixer, because I could preserve the high detail mesh without having to go through various options. And I didn't have to use any Boolean operations, which is what makes this quite handy. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to grab this bunny and we're going to have a look underneath it. So this is the Stanford bunny and it's in Mesh Mixer as a default file. And you can see very clearly that this is not a manifold or watertight mesh. And we have two different sides to these triangles. We have this side here, and within it, we have the other side. And Mesh Mixer demonstrates this side as this sort of zebra pattern, gray, black lines, however you, whatever you describe it. It's very clear that these triangles have a certain direction and they face a certain way. So their normals are facing outwards. And this makes sense because if we go to analysis and inspector and repair it, there we go. That's how you would expect this file to be made as you would bring it into your slicing engine. So it could be sliced and created with a 3D printer. But what if we grab another object, for example, a sphere? Let's grab that sphere. We'll shrink it down a little bit, maybe like that. What if this sphere was inside the bunny? I'm not, not saying intersecting, I'm saying inside it. So if I turn on my object browser, except and here you go. So we have a sphere inside the rabbit. And let's say I wanted to use this sphere to create an internal cavity in that rabbit. So you might want to be doing something like a Boolean difference if you're using something like uh, like another CAD program or in Tinkercad they call it a hole and a group, but essentially it's a Boolean difference. Um, you couldn't do that within Mesh Mixer because the meshes aren't intersecting, which is fair enough. There's nothing for it to do. It can't work on anything that's not touching. But we can manipulate the normals of this file to essentially give ourselves our own cavity. So we can go to select and select this shape and go to edit and flip normals. So you see what we've done now is now the triangles are flipped. So we now have an internal cavity. So this on itself would not print on most 3D printers. It would show up as red or as errors and it would not be very happy. But if we combine it with our bunny, combine, and then let's use a plain cut to go through the shape. Have a look at that. So it makes sense that the STL file resolves quite nicely because we now have an internal cavity within the bunny. And we've done that by flipping the normals. And that would print fine, although you're not gonna be able to get support material out of or even see that cavity. But that's not the point here. What I want to show you is how I'm using this technique to create pins in larger models. So we'll start again with a sphere, and we're going to set the size of the sphere to something that makes sense. Let's make it 100 millimeters. And let's grab a cylinder. I'll make the cylinder, I don't know, 4, 4, and then 4 by 20. Let's go with that. So this is going to form the cavity for our pins or our dowels. So when I did my Mesh Mixer video on ripping a death claw out of Fallout 4 and slicing it up for printing, a lot of you quite rightly commented on the fact that I was slicing the arms off, but they just had a flat 
flat surface to try to glue them back together. And that's not ideal if you're trying to align things perfectly. So a good example here would be if we're trying to make this sphere in two halves, because the bottom halves of spheres don't usually print very nicely. And we want to align them nicely using two pins. So here I've got my first pin, accept, and let's go to view show object browser, which always disappears for some reason. And we will turn this pin into a cavity by reversing the normals. So control A or double click, edit, flip normals. Again, I may be using the complete wrong terminology here. I am not a mathematician. I am not a programmer. I'm not an engineer. I just know how to use the software to do what I want. And I want to show you guys how that works for me. So we've got this one uh, cavity here. So let's uh, duplicate it. So oh, that's one one. So we've got yep, two copies. And we're going to move them into place. So this can be a little bit tricky in Mesh Mixer. Um, use your arrow keys to change the, the, uh, the steps it moves in. And we want to try to get it onto the zero. Is my sphere not at zero? Transform. No, it's, it's, it's at zero. So it's at the origin. So we want to move our pins into place where they're exactly centered. So, yep, that's zero. That's zero. Okay, so it's a little bit kludgy. You can't easily see it, but that looks pretty good to me. Except, and let's move this other one across to zero. And then let's move it to there. You could line it up properly if you're a bit bit more careful, but I'm pretty happy with that. And as a bit of a bit of a kludge, you can select the the main object and then hide it while it's being selected, and it will show you like a trans translucent view of where your pins are. Cool. So I'm happy with that. We'll make it visible again. And now select your pins and your object, and combine. And that's what you would do. For example, on a joint on a large object you're trying to pin together, you put the pins in first, and then, yep, you guessed it, go to plane cut. And your plane will cut through where you want through the pins. So it, this is it's at the origin by default, which is exactly what I want. And you can see here that those cavities become nice holes. And the, the beauty about this, let me just uh, do it. So slice, keep both sides, accept, and separate the shells. So for example, if I decided to get a pin now and add that in, for example, if I made it you know, four and then I made it a bit deeper. Actually, it's very difficult to manipulate when you're doing a drop solid. If I did a brilliant subtraction of brilliant difference here, except look, it's not too bad. Mesh Mix has come a long way, but you can see what it's done here to the triangles. It's it's had to create more to make that succeed, and it's not that perfect. It's not a perfect uh, cylinder. I mean, it's an STL, they're, they're triangles, but when you compare that to these ones, which we did using the cavities by reverse, by flipping the normals, they're much cleaner. They are much cleaner. And that's what I like about doing this, because you can take an extremely high polygon model. This is part one of six. This model is humongous and I'm really keen to show you guys more about it. But to print it, I had to do it in sections and I'd use this, this technique to put pins in and it didn't damage the, the surface of the, the STL at all, which is exactly what I was after. Now you can use this method as well to do some really wacky stuff and that's, let's go through that now. So I'm gonna make a copy of my sphere, not strictly needed, but just in case. And I'm gonna play with the make pattern tool, which is quite a lot of fun. But uh, before I do that, I'm just going to make my sphere a little bit smaller. So let's go to transform and just shrink it down just a little bit so it doesn't clip on the edge of this sphere. Yeah, it looks good to me. So I'm going to make pattern and the make pattern tool within Mesh Mixer is, I don't really know a practical use of it. Maybe honeycombing or making something lighter for an SLS print, but it is, it is loads of fun to use. So let's go with mm, lattice. Yeah, that is crazy. So let's go with lattice. Let's scale our spacing out. Something like that. That's pretty cool. And we have different types of uh, intersection modes. So 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this make pattern and then I'm going to invert the normals and then insert it into the original sphere. So I have a sphere with this crazy internal void or cavity. So let's try subtract. Let's see what that looks like. Right, well that looks pretty cool. So don't think we're going to invert this so it's going to become a cavity. So let's accept that. And let's just make sure there's no errors because sometimes make pattern does make errors, but no, that's pretty good. Select all, control A and flip normals. <laughs> Looks like a Death Star. Cool. And let's go with our original sphere and combine them. And what we've got now, if I go to plain cut, is this. <laughs> How crazy is that for such little effort? So we've got this sphere with this internal cavity, which has got this lattice inside. And all we did is we flipped the normals to tell the tell the, the STL file, you know, what should be solid. And we just, you know, made it that made it work that way. We didn't have to do any crazy unions or make solids or anything like that. And we ended up with this absolutely nuts shape with very little effort. So I, I'm having tons of fun doing this and I would love to see your result. If you have a go at this, uh, let me know in the comments how you go because it's, it's pretty cool and pretty easy to do as well. So thank you so much for watching guys. Let me know in the comments if this kind of thing is just commonplace. Like does everyone know about this in industry? Or is this sort of a new way to approach creating voids in a, a mesh? I mean, I've, I will admit, I've never really seen anyone do it. And I, I admit it's a little bit embarrassing that it's taken me so long to take an understanding that you can do this kind of thing instead of resorting to make solids and boolean operations in different software. And it actually makes sense, you know, an STL file is just triangles with a, with a normal. And if you create your own cavities, why not just manipulate that normal to have a cavity instead of having to somehow cut it away and re rely on various other tricks? I, I don't know. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on if this is... Uh, actual legitimate useful technique. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks and reviews, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys later. Bye.